Thank you, Mr. President. Fellow Toastmasters and dear guests, welcome to online presenters. We are so happy to see you. This is an advanced class, and the purpose of this class is to improve your skills for better webinars and online events. As you start in advance, I want to remind you that this meeting is being recorded and the recordings may be used for the club's educational and public relations activities. If you are not speaking, please mute your microphone. We would love to see you on screen, but if you do anything distracting, such as getting up from your chair and going someplace, reading or sneezing, please mute yourself and turn your video off. The controls are on the bottom left of the screen, corner of the screen. For the role holders, please change your panel username to ensure it shows your role and name. Click on the upper right corner of your screen and select the name to do so. We have members and guests from around the world. As a professional organization, we ask that you please be aware of language that may be seen as offensive and insensitive due to cultural differences. If you are speaking, please do not forget to silence your phone and most importantly, smile and show your active support to your fellow Toastmasters throughout the meeting. I shall now call upon our club president, Nick Lacan. Thank you very much, Asil. Thank you to all our members and guests in attendance today. It gives me great pleasure to open our meeting on Tuesday, well, Monday, July 20th, or in some cases, Tuesday. And I really am looking forward to this. It's a table topic, uh, sorry, a Toastmaster debut for one of our newer members. And I want to give him a big, big, big welcome. Please put your hands together for Dr. Michael Alexander. Thank you very much, Nick. Thank you very much, everybody. I can't tell you how delighted I am to be here. But of course, this being cyberspace, I guess I'm everywhere. I do not have to postulate that this is going to be a great meeting. Given the quality of this club and the genius of the individual members who I'm working with today, it's axiomatic. The few mathematicians who are on the line have just gone, oh my goodness, he's not all of the major mathematics in here. He must be a mathematician. I'm not, I'm an economist, but it doesn't matter. The more you know, the more you can come up with strange things to say. So I'm delighted to have you guys here. I'm delighted for a chance to actually, this is my first Toastmaster in, in the virtual world. And I'm gonna see if it's any different, uh, other than the fact that you guys can't get me off stage, which I'm sure is uh, a major concern that some of you are, are going to be dealing with. I'd like to start off by introducing the people who are going to be working the functionary roles here. To begin with, Lewis Brown will be serving as the ah counter. We did get one filled in. Antoinette Trim will be our grammarian. Uh, we know how an ah counter works, so I'm not gonna worry about Lewis explaining the ah counter. But Antoinette, would you tell us a little bit about what you're going to do as a grammarian, please? Good evening the Toastmaster of the day and everyone, by extension. It is so good that when we can listen to someone who speaks properly against someone with poor use of the English language. And my role as grammarian is to observe anyone who makes good use of the English language or flawed use of the English language and to point out not so good use of the English language. The word for today is postulate. It means to suggest or assume the fact, existence or truth of something as a basis 
for reasoning discussion or belief. In this light, I would like to postulate that everyone use the word of the day. Back to you, Toastmaster of the day. Thank you very much. I appreciate that. And this club being purely online has something which other clubs do not necessarily have, and that is a voyeur. I'm, I'm sorry, a watcher. The watcher's job is to make sure that, well, why don't I let the watcher explain? John Kelligan? I've never been called a voyeur, but that's an, an interesting introduction. The watcher is looking at how are we presenting ourselves on screen? Are we reasonably closely aligned to the center? Is there a massive amount of space above our heads? Or is our chin sitting on the bottom? And what's our background looking like? Is it something that's reasonable? And if everything is looking really good at the end of the day, we can all celebrate. So that's what we'll do with this meeting. Thank you, excellent. We're also gonna have someone watch the chats. And John Quick, would you explain to us how are you going to do that? Mr. Toastmaster, as the chat monitor, I will be the first one to try and answer any questions that come up in the chat. I'll also be pulling out highlights to share back at the end of the meeting, such as links and resources or very funny things that people put in the chat during the meeting. Mr. Toastmaster. Thank you, sir. And lastly, when we come to, to vote on our speakers, etc. We're going to send our votes to Rosanna Duncanson. Uh, I don't think we need to tell from her for exactly how that works. Hopefully you've all voted before. If not, shame on you. So I'm ready to go next and ask our general evaluator if he wants to give us any, I'm sorry, if she, because it's a cell. Do you have any comments you want to share with us before we start the uh, speaking? Uh, Dr. Michael, if possibly we could have uh, Lou and then the timer as well, please. Uh, explain the role. Okay, I was going to get to that after the general evaluator, but. Okay, my apologies. Oh, um, you asked me something? Um, yes, is there okay. any, as our general evaluator, is there anything you want to say before? Um, no, uh, no, I'm good. I'm listening to everyone. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Okay. okay. Uh, should I explain my role? Why don't you explain your role and if you want to give any directions to the um, evaluators so that they know what particularly you will be looking for from them. Well, uh, I will be introducing our evaluators who will be evaluating the speakers' speeches and um, we'll be asking reports from our helpers and give uh, feedback or overall feedback. Uh, back to you, doc Dr. Michael. Thank you. Thank you very much. And our timer tonight, um, okay, I'm sorry, folks. I've got the timer uh, listed somewhere here, but I can't find them right now. Is Sonali. That's why I can't find it. Oh, Sonali, it's you, such a lovely smile you've got there. You're probably going to hide it when you show us time. But if you tell us how you are going to time us. Thank you so much, Mr. Table, uh, Mr. Toastmaster of the day. My associate Toastmasters and most welcome guests, I'm Sonali Ravindra Kumar, your timer for today. As a timer, my job is to keep a track of the time during speeches, evaluations, and table talks. For example, if a speech is five to seven minutes long, I will turn on the green light at five, yellow light at six, and red light at seven. I will give you a grace period of 30 seconds after which we will all have to clap you off. And back to you, Mr. Toastmaster of today. If you could show us just briefly what the lights look like, so we know what we're looking for. Sure. This is the green light for five minutes, yellow for six, and red for seven minutes. Back to you, Mr. Toastmaster. 
Thank you very much. Our speakers are advised to keep Sonali in view so you can tell what time she's showing you. And our last functioner I want to introduce you to before we start will be our ah counter, Lewis Brown. And uh, Lewis, would you tell us what you're going to do? Certainly, Mr. Toastmaster fellow, Toastmasters and guests, ah counter, I am responsible for listening for clutch words or is it crutch words? I always forget. Either way, ahs, erms, uhs, oohs, anything like that that may kind of interrupt your speech. I'll also be looking or listening for double starts. And while we have an ample supply of Toastmasters, I'm sure the demand for crutch words will be very low. Little economics joke there, folks. Back to you, Mr. Toastmaster. Thank you very, very much. And I hope you guys are as excited as I am to get into listening to the actual speakers because we've got some wonderfully dynamic speakers to work from. The first of those speakers for us tonight will be Lai Sing Zhu who is working on presentation mastery. She is right now on her evaluation and feedback speech, the first one, with the title of Gifts to Our Children. For again, five to seven minutes in alley, uh, Lacing Zoo. Thank you, Toastmaster of the day, and fellow Toastmasters and the guests. If you can afford to give each of your children one gift, what that might be, a car, a big house, or perhaps a small loan of a million dollars? What about a set of genetically enhanced genes? If the technology is ready, are you willing to give your children the gifts of genetically enhanced themselves and job start their life at two? make them more likely to succeed in a society. The gene editing in human embryo has been a controversy for decades. In recent years, because of the invention of the CRISPR technology, that has added a sense of urgency to this controversy. Finally, we mankind has the power of accurately modifying our genes and create changes in our health, our appearance, and our intelligence that can be passed into future generations and even change the course of human evolution. What an exciting moment. However, there's so much controversy and so much confusion about how we can use this technology responsibly. One question is, can we use this technology to create healthier children or even enhance the children? Back in 2018, the two genetically modified babies were born in China. That has caused a huge backlash in scientific community. In response to this instance and the concern raised, both US government and the Chinese government banned the practice ever since. Despite the setback, using genetic technology to make healthier children is not likely a issue in our future. In the scientific community, there is a consensus has been postulated and confirmed that when time is ready, the technology can be used to fix serious genetic conditions that if there is no any other alternatives. The American public seems also agree this point of view based on a survey conducted by Pew Research Center back to 2018. The elephant in the room is, can we use this technology to enhance our children? If you say no, you are not alone. Based on a survey, 80% of the participants against this idea. And interestingly, among those survey participants who are highly religious, the majority actually support to use it for treatment, but against the idea of use it to make our children more intelligent. If we look 
had this under deep in the light, then we will ask our question. We we will ask ourselves questions. What is a problem to make our children more intelligent? Why not to enhance our children? Since we already play in God anyway by treating the children use genetic editing technology in embryo. Of course, there is pros and cons of human embryo enhancement. It can be a slippery road and it certainly will cause a series of issues at both personal and societal levels. But if we look at this way, if we don't use this technology to enhance our children, some other people will use it to enhance theirs. Their children and our children are going to compete for all the resources in the world in their future. College, jobs, and even marriage under such circumstances, do we really have a choice not to enhance our children, to help them to get ahead, or even at least prevent them from falling behind? And as a country, if we choose not to use this technology for enhancement, what about other countries? They may promote it and embrace it. Aren't we putting our country's future at risk? Besides, how can we as a species resist the deep rooted desire to explore this technology to its fullest degrees? You see, eventually, we'll have to accept to genetically enhance our children. I doubt in the future, the choice parents face is not whether they choose to enhance their children or not. But what aspects they should enhance their children and where to find resources to do so? There is still one question quite troubling. What if my children do not like the gift I give them? Back to you, Madam, Sir, Toastmasters. But again, thank you very much. I really much appreciated your speech. I will remind everyone, however, that my last name is Alexander, and my son is enough of a smart aleck as it is. I'm not sure I want to enhance that. <laughs> However, we'll see what we do here, and we certainly will think about everything you said by saying. Hopefully, we'll think of it intelligently. We can't you, hear you. You muted yourself, Mr. Toastmaster. That's the problem with figuring out all the cleverness. You outsmart yourself. Uh, our next speaker is Tricia Smith. And she asked the question, how much sleep do you get each night? Sleeping is healing and recovering time. Our bodies need sleep. Lack of sleep can cause illness, disease, and shut your body down. Are you ready to learn about the importance of sleep and making sleep a daily priority? Ladies and gentlemen, with presentation mastery level one, mastering fundamentals, Trisha Smith with take time to sleep, get enough sleep to remember your dreams and sleep like a baby. Sleeping is healing. Thank Trisha you so much. Thank you so much, but the, uh, the screen sharing is disabled before the timing starts. Can I please have that enabled? Thank you. It's, there we go. Okay, sorry about that, yes. Thank you. Oh, 
there we go. Can everybody see my screen? Thank you. I'm Tricia Smith. What a great introduction. So you're going to see my first two slides kind of say what Dr. Michael said. So I'm going to start with my favorite slide. Sleep. Do you always get a good night's sleep? Have you ever been sleep deprived? I have, and I'm gonna share my experience about that in a moment. I'm going to focus on three main areas of sleep. Good sleep, lack of sleep, and the sleep hygiene habit. So you'll learn about how to make a good habit. So let me talk about my experience. About three years ago, prior up to that point, I was, I was uh, operating on less than five hours sleep. If you've ever done that, you don't want to do that. I did it for a long time and it caught up to me and my body pretty much shut down. Um, it was a hospital experience and I'm still recovering from it. So three years later. So let me tell you how we can get some good sleep, avoid lack of sleep and develop a good sleep hygiene habit. Those are the three things I'm going to focus on. I'm going to talk about healthy foods for good sleep, dreams and sleep time recommendations. So on the slide, you're going to see some of the uh, benefits of good sleep. So along with this, um, better brain health, motivation, a better immune system, stress management, better health overall, better body functions, better metabolism. Doesn't that sound great? Sleep affects all of that. So let's talk about lack of sleep. Now this could be pretty detrimental. I talked about my experience getting less than five hours sleep. You don't wanna do that. So less than six hours is gonna cause uh, inflammation. Inflammation leads to disease. It can affect your heart health, cause breathing, breathing problems, insomnia, and things like sleep apnea. You probably heard of those. Those are the most common. And it affects our circadian rhythms, which is our internal body clock. So what can we do about preventing lack of sleep. We can develop a good sleep hygiene habit. It takes 21 days to develop a good habit. So here's some recommendations. If you can think of creating a routine, and I would start with a checklist, do a checklist for yourself. You can even make, make some notes as we talk about it and stick with that checklist. So within 21 days, it'll become automatic and you'll have a good sleep high, hygiene habit. Uh, keeping a dark room to sleep in when you close your eyes to sleep making it quiet, being calm, not stressed, not sad, not mad, not angry, avoiding certain foods, sugar, salt, fat, not eating too close to bed, avoiding technology, caffeine, smoking, and alcohol. Things we should probably stay away from anyway, right? So remember our checklist. Here's 12 foods that are recommended to help you sleep. My favorite is dark chocolate and the warm milk because I love cocoa at night. It's a family tradition, especially during the cold wind weather uh, nights, because I'm in Illinois, so right now it's too hot for cocoa. So B vitamins like fish, poultry, meat, eggs, dairy, those are good. Why B vitamins? Because that's how our body makes melatonin. Melatonin is a hormone that regulates our sleep cycles, and it's created also by having a dark room when we sleep. So dreams, we want good dreams, right? Happy people make happy dreams, sad people make sad dreams. So what we think about during the day affects our dreams at night. How much should we be sleeping? Seven to nine hours, not less than five, not six, seven to nine for adults. So remember, what we think about during the day affects our sleep quality at night. So my hope for everyone is to sleep well, be well, Get your beauty sleep, and I hope everyone gets a good night's sleep. Back to you, Mr. Toastmaster. Uh, sorry, President Toastmaster. Thank you very much. Uh, I do need to apologize to you. I kind of nodded off. Or was that a good thing? <laughs> <laughs> Not sure. Um, but in any event, uh, welcome. Thank you for that. Um, and I always sleep more than they tell me I'm supposed to sleep. Uh, I don't know, no one's ever told me that too much sleep is a problem. Uh, I don't get everything done I need to, but that's also because I'm lazy, but it's okay. But thank you, appreciate that, appreciate your, uh, the information. Very, very good. Next, we're gonna have Ben Rachi. I mispronounced his name. 
but it doesn't matter what the proper pronunciation is. <laughs> because the most important thing is what he's going to tell you. And that's what's going to change your life. He's going to talk, to, he's going to ask you the question again why can we not make our new habits stick? And what are three myths that hold us back? My friends, Ben, Racha, and I'll get it right sometime, random shot, I'm sure, with three myths about building new habits, which is from the motivational strategies level one, mastering fundamentals, researching and presenting. So everyone, Ben Racha. Thank you so much, Mr. Toastmaster. Thank you so much. So let me just very quickly set up. Okay, here we go. Very good. John Dryden once said, we first make our habits and then our habits make us. How many of you would agree that habits are very, very critical for your success and your happiness in life? Quickly show me your hands one time. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. So today I want to share with you three myths about building new habits. Uh, that have personally stopped me for a long time, creating new habits, even though I knew they were very important. Um, and I'm very, sure, I'm very certain that they will be important for you as well. So let's get into it. Uh, first, I wanna share with you some quick research. Inc. Magazine, I think in 2019, they shared research about what are people's top 10 New Year's resolutions. So you can see a list there, right? From diet or eat healthier, exercise more, to lose weight, save more and spend less, learn a new skill or hobby, right? And so on, right? So a lot of typical habits that people want to build every single year. But what was interesting about the research is that they found out that 60% of us, they make New Year's resolutions, but only about eight of them actually achieve them. Yeah, raise your hand one time if you've set a habit in the past and you failed to actually create the habit for the long term. Quick show of hands. I know I have many times, <laughs> many times, yeah. Can you do me a quick favor one time? Can you write in the chat box quickly one time? How long do you think it actually takes to form a habit? How long does it take? Just quickly write it in the chat box. 66, 21, 14, Jackie, 12, two weeks, 21 days. Yeah, keep going, 30 days, seven to 21 days, 21 days, yeah. There's no scientific evidence that says six weeks, 71, 18, 20, 254. Very good, very good. Thank you, thank you. So yeah, that's the first myth. The first myth is, and I also grew up with that, right? I started reading personal development books since I was around 14 years old. And for me, the big number was always 30, right? For a lot of people, it's 21 or 28. Um, before our lovely speaker, just before me, she shared that it's 21 days, right? Again, it's very common. I've also, I've had this belief for so many years. A recent research, and we cannot really call it truth, but recent research from the European Journal of Social Psychology, and two of you actually wrote it exactly like this, so you know about the study, but it's that it's 66 days on average, right? So, and what these researchers found out, depending on habit, it takes anything from 18 to 254 days to build a new habit. Right, so some are much easier to build, maybe drink a cup of water every day, right? And some are very, very hard to break. Imagine some of these bad habits some people have. For example, if they're smoking their whole life, you cannot expect to break that within 30 days, 21 days, even 66 days is probably very, very tough. Yeah, so it really depends. It really depends. But the focus that I want us to focus on myself over the years as well, is that we really got to focus on building long-term habits. Yeah, really for the long term. And in the past, I would always think, okay, great, I'm building this thing for 30 days. It's up and running and great. No, it wasn't. <laughs> it didn't work. I know nowadays what's very popular online on Facebook and everywhere are these 30 day challenges. Um, I had a lot of my friends taking these and just to share their experience, they've been exhausted after them. Yeah, and I, I don't see them continue the habit after the 30 days. So for you and myself as well, let's focus on building long-term habits. Myth number two, it is something that you have to do every single day. Now I've noticed that in the past with myself, I noticed that also with my clients, uh, with friends as well, that people often have the strong standard. If I wanna build a habit, it has to either be every day or it has to be from Monday to Friday, true? 
or it has to be three or four times a week. <laughs> and it's just not true. It's just not true. Let me give you an example. Um, just type in the chat box one time. How often do you go to the bank? How many times a month, maybe, or a week? Yeah, just type in the chat box one more time. Never. <laughs> <And who is? laughs> Online, okay. Once a month, three times. Thank you. Yeah. Any other? What's a bank? <laughs> All online. Yeah. Exactly. So most people, even going online, doing online banking, it all depends. Once a year, twice a month, very good, very good, right? We, we don't go to the bank all the time and we don't use online banking all the time. But if, if somebody asks you, are you in the habit of going to the bank? Uh, you probably would say yes. You probably would say yes. You know, another example here, how often do you go on a trip? You can quickly type that in one more time. Do you go every month? Do you go four times a year, three times a year? How often is it for you? Two or three times a year. Thank you, Lewis. Three big trips twice a year, two times a year, one to three times a year before COVID. Yeah, I made that example right now from me here, huh? <laughs> Unfortunately, yeah. Too many, good, good. Yeah, but you would also say you're in the habit of going on a trip, right? Probably you would. Yeah, so the truth is how often it really depends on the habit. Sometimes every day is the right amount, sometimes twice a week, twice a month, even twice a year can be a fantastic habit to build. Yeah, and the last myth, myth, myth number three, is that people believe if I miss one day, it's game over. So they set that they have the standard from Monday to Friday, and then Monday I did it, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, yes! Friday, ah, it's game over. I cannot continue, oh my God. And what happens? They give up. And this happened to me many times before. I know a lot of people, and we beat ourselves up over it. You know, we're, we're not happy with ourselves over it. So don't do that anymore. Because if you fall off a horse, what do you do? Get right back up, right? Continue the ride, continue getting on the horse. So truth number three is that if you miss a day, simply, gently, just keep moving forward. Keep moving forward. Because in the end, remember, we want to focus on building long-term habits. Thank you, fellow Toastmasters. Back to you, Mr. Toastmaster. Well, thank you very much. It's a delightful thing to hear about habits and building habits. Um, I don't concentrate so much on building good habits as I do on learning to enjoy my bad ones. And you talked about resolutions. My average New Year resolution starts off with put on five pounds and watch more television. And I am proud to say that I always accomplish my New Year's resolutions. So. Those of you who take a more healthy minded approach than me, however, should listen to Ben and learn from what he has to offer. Next, we're going to move on to table topics. This is a chance for you to learn to speak impromptu and unlike me, probably say something worth hearing. For that, we're going to turn control over to distinguished Toastmaster and all around nice guy, Graham Carnes. Graham? Thank you, Mr. Toastmaster, ladies and gentlemen. Today's table topic theme is postulation. We're taking the word for the day, postulate, and we are doing variations on it. Now, unlike uh, in a conventional Toastmasters club, a brick and mortar Toastmasters club, where everybody gets asked the question and then we announce who's going to be the victim. I'm going to do it the other way around so that when I call your name, you can remember to turn your microphone on because that's important. And we'll start with Diane. Diane, I'd like you for a period of one to two minutes with lights at one, one and a half and two, if I can, Madam Timekeeper. Uh, Diane, I'd like you to postulate a theory that we all accept. So postulate a theory that we all accept. Diane. Thank you so much, Table Topics, Master Graham. Here's the theory that I think all will uh, embrace. And that is everybody needs to have a little bit of fun every, but every once in a while. And I say this right now because I think that I've become very 
speed up in my work and I notice that colleagues are as well. These small tasks have taken on mountainous proportions and temper, tempers are short. I am a grown up and I, I approached a colleague about a situation as an example, I'll show my own experience. I had this situation that I was dealing with and I felt like I was going to cry. I, today I was talking to another person on the phone and I was just like, he was, he was asking me, why don't you do this? And I said, I can't possibly do that. I, and I just refused. And, and I noticed I'm not the only one. So all all of us can surely agree that we can take some time to have some fun. I know for myself that I wish you all a few moments of fun and possibly more in the near future. Thank you so much. Thank you, Diane. Thank you for that. As the founder of the organization that we all belong to, Ralph Smedley once said, we learn most in moments of enjoyment. And that's true not only for Toastmasters, but for life. Yes, seek some fun in your life. A good theory that I suspect we can all agree with. Now, Nick Lacani, you on the other hand, I'm going to ask to postulate a theory that you've just made up and you've got to convince us of this theory. So Nick, postulate a theory that you've just made up. Well, I've not made this up, honestly, but anybody who walks and puts their left foot forward needs seeing to, I mean, seeing to with, by a doctor, if you know what I mean. Walking with your left foot forward first. I mean, what's all that about? Why? Do you have some left-wing tendencies that we don't know about? I'm sure there's a few McCarthyists out there somewhere who actually want to have a chat with you. Walking with the left foot forward actually is unnatural because we're all right-handed. I mean, all normal people are, aren't they? And what we do is we've got to carry that through the right hand and all the way down to our feet. Put your right foot forward because it's the right thing to do. And when you do that, you feel this glow warming up from your inner toe all the way up to your mind and you feel good. Put your right foot forward. If you go left, no, that doesn't seem right. It's unnatural. It's, it's an anathema to us. We want to make sure that we step right. We keep right. We do right. Hands up, those of you who are right-handed. Okay. Now, notice that some, most people actually put up their right hand. Yeah? Hands up who are those who are left-handed. Oh, there's a few. Right. Okay. You see? Right. Those of you who are left-handed, are you left-footed as well? Keep your hand up. Do you, you step first with the left foot? Well, it's a good job we have many doctors in the house tonight because I think that we need to have some house calls. Back to you, Mr. Topic Master. Well, it's a creative postulation, I have to tell you that, Nick. Uh, and given that uh, the word postulate also has a religious um, connection, it might be worth saying that uh, I know that there are probably some people in this uh, group who were wrapped across the knuckles by the nuns for writing with their left hands as children. That dates back to the theory that the left hand was the hand of the devil. The very word sinister means of the left. All right, David. I'm going to ask you now to postulate something or to tell us about something from your childhood that you no longer postulate, that you no longer believe. So something from your childhood that you no longer postulate. David Carr. Thank you, Mr. Topics Master Graham. I suppose that at some point I, I postulated that Star Trek was the best TV show that there ever was and ever would be. 
and I'm talking about Star Trek, the original, the Kirk, the Spock, the, yeah, yeah, yeah. And why do I put that in the past? It's because enough time has gone by that I've gotten kind of sick of Star Trek and all the spinoffs of Star Trek and the movies of Star Trek and the reboots of Star Trek. And so, you know, it's kind of trekked all over me. Uh, maybe I just need a few years of uh, a break and I'll go back and I'll, I'll watch those, those old original shows with pleasure. Uh, at the moment, I'm, I'm really into The Expanse, which is a show that is on Amazon Prime, or at least it is in the US, maybe it's distributed other ways around the world. But it's, uh, I'm into The Expanse, I'm going back and I'm, I'm reading the books that the TV show is based on, which are kind of neat because instead of being novelizations of something that was on TV, because back as a teenager, I also read all of those, all the adaptations into book form of Star Trek stories. Uh, these, these were actually books and they're, it's kind of interesting because you, you know what's coming in general, but actually they reformulated it quite a bit. They reformulated the story light, line quite a bit from, to go from the books to a TV show format. And I'm enjoying them both. Mr. Topics Master. Thank you, David. Thank you. I'm not sure I would agree that I'm trekked out, but I would agree with you that The Expanse is one of the best bits of TV of recent years. And I'm so waiting for the last book in the series. But there are also a number of uh, short stories from The Expanse universe that I have yet to read. But enough about science, science fiction. Except that we're now going to stay with science fiction of sorts. Rick, I would like to, you to and this is a bad pun, instead of postulate, I want you to post your fate. I want you to describe what things are like for you a year from today. So Rick, post your fate and postulate on what things are like a year from today. I actually have had the opportunity, fellow Toastmasters, to enjoy the use of a time machine. And that time machine has enabled me to not only go forward a year or a day or a decade into the future, but has allowed me to travel back and forth in time and explore various facets of not only my own life, but also many other lives as well. So the answer to the question, what will my life be like a year from now? Well, quite frankly, that's difficult to tell because I've been tra 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 traversing my own timeline so often that it's really impossible for me to be sure of which timeline I'm actually going to be on. Now I will tell you that I have hopes for what I will be experiencing a year from now. Certainly being able to go to a restaurant or go and travel to various places that I very much enjoy. To visit people and not be afraid that I might bring with them a terrible, terrible gift. So I will tell you that being a time traveler and postulating a year from now is extremely difficult, but it's something that we can all look forward to because in the end, we're all time travelers. We're gonna get there eventually. Back to you, Mr. Traffic. Rick, I thank you for that and for bringing us back around again. Well done. Andy Byrne often has to leave these meetings uh, at around the top of the clock because he's had other meetings. And so I have made sure that he's getting a table topic today. Andy, we're going to do the exact opposite of what we just did with Rick. And we're going to ask you to postulate how things might have changed if, you can choose whatever the if was, but how things might have changed if, Andy Byrne. Thank you very much, Topic Master Graham. I'd like to postulate that if we can promote Toastmasters across the globe, then we could minimize the onset of dementia and Alzheimer's. As many of you know, that dementia and Alzheimer's starts increasing at age 65. About 10% or one out of 10 people get it. But by the age of 80, it's one out of two. That's right. 
if you're over 80, is associated with this. However, they have postulated that if you use your mind and do table topics and other kind of speaking and planning and listening skills, your onset of Alzheimer's or dementia can be postponed by as much as 10 years. Therefore, it is our responsibility, each and every one of us, to share that information with our parents, with our friends, with our elders and seniors, that they need to be involved in Toastmasters to reduce the onset of dementia and Alzheimer's. Thank you, Andy, and excellent advice. I postulate that we should all do that. I know that's not using postulate correctly, but I'm going to use it anyway. I have only one left because we uh, have a new member speech coming up. And so, Elaine, I'm going to give it to you. And this is, if you thought the post your fate was a bad pun, this is even worse. You're going to postulate, you, that is, you are going to post something you, but it's going to be late when it gets there. Okay, what happens when whatever you have posted late arrives? Elaine. When I posted the notice of who won the election, and it was in error, <clears throat> and I was given the responsibility to post it, and I was wrong, oh my, I was embarrassed. But yet, I guess I was perfectly poised to be in that position to post the notice, which turned out to be still in question. I then put myself in the position to help be a harbinger of peace, and curiosity while the true count got resolved. Little did I know when I got that task to announce the winner of the vote of this great election that I would be called on to help be a harbinger of peace while the matter was resolved. Back to you. Thank you, Elaine. What a wonderful way of not actually saying anything. And I congratulate <laughs> you on doing that. Uh, but I do have to share a screen. You've probably all seen this, but this is my favourite ever wrong election announcement. The famous Dewey defeats Truman Chicago Daily Tribute headline. I thought that was, uh, as, a, as a journalist, I know I should not throw stones if I live in a glass house, but I couldn't help it. Thank you for that. I postulate, ladies and gentlemen, that we are going to continue to have an excellent meeting, but that's all that I have time for as Table Topics Master, and so I will hand control back to our Toastmaster of the day, Dr. Michael Alexander. Thank you very much. Wonderful set of, of questions. I'm delighted by it. In light of your headline, I'd like to share with you an actual anecdote. Apparently, the night of the election, Dewey saw those headlines and said to his wife, honey, get ready. Tonight, you're sleeping with the President of the United States. When the clarification came out, she said, so tell me, is he coming over here or am I going over there? If we could have a time age report, please. Sonali? Absolutely. Absolutely. I'm sorry, I was enjoying it way too much. So the timing report for table topics, or should I give you for the speakers as well? Give us for the speakers as well, if you would, please. Sure, yeah. So Lee Singh's Lee Singh spoke for six minutes and 32 seconds, and Ben spoke for six minutes, 48 seconds. Tricia spoke for four minutes, so she doesn't qualify, but we can vote between Lee Singh and Ben. Okay. And as far as the, sorry, go ahead. I thank you very much for that, and if you could tell us table topics, please. Sure. So for the table topics, everybody qualifies. We have Diana, Nick, 
David Carr, Rick, Andy, and Elaine. Back to you, Mr. Toastmaster. Thank you very much. Um, all right, and I have, well, I'll save that for the end here. But uh, so we have one of the most delightful of exercises of any club, one of the most exciting, because it tells us if we're doing something right or not. We have a chance to introduce a new member. And to do that, the Vice President of Membership for the club, Lou, would you introduce our newest member, please? Certainly, Mr. Toastmaster, fellow Toastmasters and honored guests. On behalf of online Toast presenters, Toastmasters, it is my duty and privilege to induct Dr. Latasha Henderson into our club. Thank you very much. Latasha, would you? No, I'm not done, Mr. Toastmaster. I was just sharing my screen. Thank you. Go for it. Thank you. This is an important decision and an important occasion, both for Latasha and for our club. As experienced Toast speakers and Toastmasters, uh, Latasha will enrich us as we strive to enrich her in a spirit of sharing and enjoyment. Together, we expand our effectiveness as dynamic leaders, presenters, and communicators. Now, Dr. Latasha, please wait until I call on you to affirm your commitment to the Toastmasters promise. In the presence of fellow online presenters, do you, Dr. Latasha, pledge to attend meetings regularly and prepare for each assignment, to participate actively in club activities, to evaluate others in a positive, constructive manner, to build open, friendly relationships with our fellow Toastmasters, and to bring other new members into the club so that they also can gain the benefits of Toastmasters. Dr. Latasha, please unmute yourself and agree by saying I do. I do. Wonderful. To the current members of Online Presenters, I do remind you of your pledge to support Dr. Latasha in her quest for self-development, to provide her with positive, helpful evaluations, to maintain a friendly, supportive atmosphere, and to make Online Presenters uh, and your online presenters Toastmaster membership a rewarding and fulfilling experience. Congratulations, Dr. Latasha. Welcome to online presenters. Attendees, feel free to unmute yourselves and give her a warm round of applause. Welcome, Latasha. Hey, welcome, Latasha. Thank you. Welcome. Back to you, Mr. Toastmaster. Dr. Latasha, welcome. Thank you. They, they put all those supporting things like they're an obligation on us. They're not. <laughs> they're a chance for us to help you grow so you can support us and teach us even more. And so I don't consider an obligation. I consider it a privilege to support you and a delight and a privilege to have you here. Thank you. Thank you very much for joining us. Now comes one of the favorite parts of everybody's meeting is when I shut up and let someone else take over. Asel, you are our general evaluator, and if you would take over from here, I think we'd all appreciate it. Thank you so much, Mr. Toastmaster of the day. Thank you. Let's commence uh, with the evaluations of the prepared speeches. Our first evaluator this evening is Jim Barber. He will be evaluating Lisa's Juice speech. Please help me welcome Jim Barber to the virtual lecture. Thank you, Madam General Evaluator. My fellow Toastmasters, our most welcome guests, and especially, of course, Toastmaster Lee Sing Zhu. This project was from the presentation Mastery Level 1, Mastering Fundamentals. And Li Sing, you, have dem you demonstrated that you have indeed mastered the fundamentals. I liked almost everything about your presentation this evening. 
Specifically, let's start with the title. I like that, Gifts to Our Children. It's intriguing. We had a vague idea what you were going to talk about, but we weren't exactly sure where you were going to go with that, which is exactly what a title is supposed to do. Once you got started, I'll start with my favorite thing, eye contact. You established great eye contact with the camera, not with your audience. And you, that was very well done. I put you on speaker view so I could make sure. And nope, you, were, you spent the entire time looking at the camera. That was so well done. And it's exceptional because this presentation was obviously well written. And you presented it so well looking at the camera that you either had it memorized or you used notes very effectively because I couldn't tell that you were using notes. So whichever it is, it doesn't really matter. The end effect was superb. You came across establishing a great rapport with your audience and you looked like the authority on your topic. That was superb. Presentation, everything was great. Your pausing, your, your pacing, your volume, everything was good. You didn't use a lot of gestures, but the gestures that you used were effective. That was great. You, I like this, you have a wry, subtle sense of humor. You referred to a small loan of $1 million. Yes, indeed, a small loan of $1 million definitely got my attention. And that brings me to the one suggestion that I have for your presentation. I'm kind of doing something else at the same time here. At one point in your presentation, you referred to 80%. And I wrote that down. Unfortunately, I didn't write down what the 80% meant, and I don't remember it either. And that's the problem with statistics. They're just words, and so they tend to kind of fly by and don't necessarily have the effect that you would like them to have. It would have helped if you had had, here we go, Nope, there we go. If you had used a slide of some sort to emphasize what you were talking about, or let's get rid of that. You don't even have to, whoops, don't even have to do that. I'll do it the old fashioned way. Hold up a prop. Here we've got 80%, 10%, 20%, 80%. I just picking up something off my desk. And this will, using something visual, will reinforce the data that you're actually trying to provide to people. But this is a small point. It was an otherwise excellent presentation. I will postulate that for the sake of the grammarian, and I'm looking forward to seeing what you're going to do in the future. Madam General Evaluator. Sorry, I got distracted. Thank you, Jim, for your evaluation. Our second evaluator this evening is Andres Malenko. He will be evaluating Trisha Smith's speech. Please help me welcome Andres Smalenko. Thank you, Madam General Evaluator, fellow Toastmasters, most welcome guests, and most importantly, Trisha. Trisha, your ambitious title for the speech, it grabbed my attention straight away. And throughout your speech, you kept that attention. I sat on the edge of my seat trying to find out what would happen next. Your speech about the importance of sleep and the importance of having happy life through the good sleep. I could see in your presentation that was concentrated on presentation mastery that you did fundamentals for a good appealing presentation for the audience. I could see and hear clear structure, a great opening with the short personal story. Then you moved into the body and you gave us slides, visual effects that could help your story to unfold. In the end, you came up with a quite powerful statement that I can use in my everyday life. It was about happy people having enough of sleep. I'm sure that quite a few people can relate to that. We all can be happy. So, hey, go and get some sleep. I really enjoy your lovable and uh, interesting posture. You enjoy yourself, your big smile into the camera, even though 
your presentation started, in my view, with uh, a little bit rush. Something I would recommend personally, Trisha, is just maybe taking a pause. It's something you, look, uh, you ask me to look out for, is just pausing uh, in your presentation. That, that's fine, I'm sure it will come. And then all those nerves and all the excitement that pour out through you from a different ways. I enjoy your speech. At the same time, making a few posts, main points throughout your speech would help us to have those hooks in our minds. We can only remember probably two or three things from your speech. What I could remember about happy people, I want to be one of them. Overall, I really enjoy the speech. I found it valuable, applicable to my everyday life and something with the slides as well. The visual effects were quite high. Perhaps you could make a less slides with slight less information. Make it three bullet points and happy people have happy sleep. I enjoyed, look forward to seeing you again. Back to you, Madam General Evaluator. Thank you, Andre, for your evaluation. Our next evaluator is Elaine Nieberding. She will be evaluating Ben Batch's speech. Please help me welcome Elaine Nieberding. Miss General Evaluator, Toastmaster of the Day, my fellow Toastmasters and most honored guests, you were really experiencing a treat tonight in the return of Ben Rachie to our club. He was a member a couple of years ago, didn't participate a lot, came back, and boy, did he come back with a bang. Now, he let me know in advance that he wanted me to evaluate the audience engagement. And it was fascinating to learn that he was gonna do this with PowerPoint. And he did it amazingly and effectively. And I also knew that this speech was based on a YouTube video that he had made. So my challenge was to watch him and also watch <laughs> the group and see his slides. His slides were effective, they were funny. He used wonderful techniques to engage the audience, including raising hands, posing questions, and getting people to engage in the chat. All the while he was doing this, he was looking at the camera without nary a break. That's quite an astounding thing to do. Another way that he was especially effective was he kept repeating the word long-term habit, building a long-term habit. And he also used kind of the rule of three, presenting three points. He was all especially effective because he related each of the myths to um, something personal. Now, the one area where I was a little bit mystified was the example that he used when he was having people look at the frequency of habit performance, he brought on this example about going to the bank. And unless you were really screwing up going to the bank related to your business or something, it, it didn't seem to me to be an example that most people would have a lot of pain about. So I think he could think about some better painful examples of things that they're looking to correct. All in all, there are very few things I think he could improve. However, because his vocal variety is so engaging, and uh, he, especially for item three, uh, when he was talking about, uh, oh my God, you know, every day, how can I, I can't do that? We would love to see him bigger. And so I would love to see this speech done where he's a little bit more visually present another time. Great work, Ben. Thank you, Elaine, for your evaluation. Ms. Timer, Somali, um, did all the evaluators meet the time qualifications? 
general evaluator. All three candidates qualified today, and you could vote between Jim Baker, Andres, and Elaine. Back Thank to you, you. evaluator. Thank you so much, Sonali. Okay, everyone, please cast your vote for the best evaluator. Okay, and now I'm going to call our helpers for their reports. I'll start with our counter, Lou Brown. Please help me welcome him. Thank you, Madam General Evaluator. In whole, we did a very good job with the ahs and ums and ers. I will say only at the end did Elaine have about four or five, and I was like, no more, please, Elaine, because I know that's not one of your weaknesses at all. Otherwise, folks had about one or two each. Uh, there were also a couple of double stars. One thing I noticed more than anything else, something that we all do and something that I know we're all practicing not to do is the sentence starters, and and so. And I will say, so seems to be a very popular one. I'm hearing that everywhere now. Maybe it's because of being an ah counter more often than I care to be. Anyway, overall, again, very good job. And that is it, Madam General Evaluator. Thank you so much, Lou. Thank you. Our next helper is Grammarian, Antoinette. Please help me welcome her. Good evening, my fellow Toastmasters once more. I would just like to highlight just one statement from each of the prepared speakers. For example, Lee Singh, she made a comment, the element, the elephant in the room. Trisha, you want to have good dreams. You normally hear about bad dreams, not so much good dreams. And Ben, if you miss a day, just simply, gently keep going on and or going forward. So those are some interesting comments that I made on our prepared speeches, speakers. I don't see, I didn't take any notice of so much any bad grammar and, as, and so on. With respect to the table topics, personnel, everybody used the word of the day more or less. But Graham, he used it for 30 something of us, the number of times that he, numerous times that he used the word of the day, it was for all of us. And that's about it. And back to you. Thank you so valid. much, Antoine, for your report. Our next helper is Watcher, John Callahan. Please help me welcome him. Thank you very much. The, the watching today was interesting. Uh, I'll pass out a couple gold stars first. Uh, ben, your camera angle and lighting were top notch. I, I couldn't improve that in any way, shape or form. You have got it nailed. So gold star to you. Our, one of our guests, uh, Bridget, had a screen behind her that was perfect in blocking out whatever mess happened to be behind her. And I wish more people would do that. Just, you know, block out the bathroom. I don't need to see when you need to get up and use the bathroom. Just block it out. So, you know, those two did excellent, excellent jobs. A couple small things, I won't name specific people, but the, the slides that were used were far too busy. I would, I rarely would advise using uh, PowerPoints on a Zoom presentation, but if you're going to do it, one or two points on a slide at most, that's it. Just don't, don't overdo whatever slides you used to do in person, cut them in half. You don't need all that busyness. Uh, also the camera angle for a number of people, I was looking at nose hair a few times, I was looking at foreheads, people were kind of all over the place. The one thing that was new this time is I think there's a number of people that have got multiple monitors because you can see when somebody's staring off this way. Maybe they're looking at their kids. I don't know, but it looks like they're staring at multiple monitors. That's something that in the online presenting world, we need to be careful about. Back to you, Mr. Madam General Evaluator. Thank you so much, John, for your report. Our next helper is chat monitor, John Quick. Please help me welcome you. Madam General Evaluator, we had Ben use the chat in an excellent way to interact with his audience today. We had John Stone sharing some resources. We also had several links shared, including timing backgrounds that are provided by World Headquarters. I'm going to post those back inside the chat right now so everyone can 
relive the highlights. Madam General Evaluator. Thank you so much, John, for your report. Now, uh, let me ask a vote counter for your report. Thank you. Uh, Rosanna. Thank you very much, General Evaluator. My report for today is as follows for best speaker that went to Ben Raji. Yay, Ben. Well done. <laughs> and for table topics, this went to Andrew Byrne. Andrew, tell you, see. And for best evaluator, Jim Barber. Yay, Congratulations, Jim. everybody. Thank you, Rosanna. Now, I think uh, we all enjoyed the meeting today. Thank you so much uh, for joining us. The meeting started on time. The only recommendation I give myself is Sergeant at arms. Don't forget to turn your video on next time. So I will go to straight to evaluation portion. I agree with all evaluators, Jim, um, about using usual visual aid to emphasize the point. And I, I would also add, uh, if Felicity could add some personal touch, uh, sharing maybe her personal experience and uh, also vocal variety. For this kind of speech, not using gestures, I think is okay. Next speaker, Tisha. Uh, and they evaluated her, totally agree with you. Uh, no pauses, uh, less slides. Uh, I would also add that Trisha spoke um, quickly. So if you slow down a little bit, that would be great. And also you could uh, engage the audience by asking questions. And um, I agree with Andre, uh, it was too much information on slides. And Ben, really good audience engagement. I agree with Elaine's feedback. And I also like that you smiled and uh, your pace was great. And uh, yeah, example, maybe you should use another example. Table topics session, Graham. Your questions were interesting and uh, about time traveling, how things can change if, and um, the about, um, answers of table topics speakers were great too. Overall, the meeting was great. I really enjoyed. Now I'm giving uh, my stage back to our Toastmaster, of the evening. Thank you very much for a marvelous, marvelous evaluation session, both to you and to all of the people who you supervise and worked with. It was just wonderful. Ladies and gentlemen, when we started, I promised you a great meeting and they delivered. I did nothing. It was all them. We had great speakers, evaluators, participants at every level. So thank you very much, guys. You make me proud to be a member of this club. And I will endeavor, as always, to do what I can to come up to your level. Thank you very, very much. Before I go, or before you go, I'm going to turn things back to our president, for final comments, Mr. President. Thank you very much, Michael. Thank you very much, all the role players and speakers and table topic speakers and, and uh, everybody involved today. Really great meeting, really enjoyed it. I just have two announcements to make. First of all, on Saturday at 2 p.m. Eastern, there's the start of a session, which is run by David. David's gonna put a link in the chat again. 
and it's about hybrid clubs and to help your clubs uh, actually go online as well as in person both at the same time so put the uh, put the link in the chat please david that would be brilliant if you come earlier you'll get a pre-game show as well secondly next monday's meeting is going to be slightly different we've got a, and in fact is uh, if bpe christian is around maybe he got, can have 15 seconds to mention that thank you mr president so hello everyone yes we're going to do things differently we're going to do a session about club members about you so we are going to have breakout rooms where you're going to be broken into groups with a club officer and we're going to ask you a few questions to see if the club is meeting your expectations your goals and how we can serve you better we're still going to have table topics and that's all for me back to you mr president thank you very much thank you for that guests are still invited and we'll do a special session for guests in one of the rooms as well all right now uh, i don't believe there are any more announcements and i'm going to call the meeting to a close it's 2 uh, p.m 2 a.m my time it's 9 p.m eastern and it's whatever time it is wherever you are thank you very much for coming today really enjoyed your company and we'll see you back here next week thank you and we can end the recording there